In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a show hide advanced action to create multi-state buttons. Okay, let's get started here. Earlier this week, or about a week, a week and a half ago maybe, I was working on a video tutorial that talked about using uh, multi-state objects in Adobe Captivate 9 to create a radio button that when you click it, it would toggle between the unchecked state and a checked state. And that's really useful if you want to create your own multiple choice single answer, uh, multiple choice questions. And uh, so a few people have, uh, have tried this out. Unfortunately, one of them, uh, Charles, is using Adobe Captivate 8. He didn't realize that my video was specific to Captivate 9. And for those that are watching, by the way, generally the, the videos that I'm producing today, uh, Captivate 9's been out about a year now, a little bit over a year. Um, all of my videos now are generally for Captivate 9, uh, unless I specify otherwise. But again, it's probably my fault for not being clear that um, this particular uh, video tutorial was specific to Captivate 9. But I'm going to show you today, in, in a way of uh, a way of helping uh, folks like Charles out who are still on Captivate 8, on how you can accomplish something very similar. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a blank project here. Um, this would apply for responsive projects as well. The only thing with responsive projects and creating your own radio buttons is that you just got to watch the dimensions. Make sure you're choosing either a fixed pixel size uh, or ensuring that you know one of your either your height or your width of these radio buttons is set to auto otherwise you know if it's 10 percent by 10 percent that could change quite radically if uh, you know if you're using a um, an, an aspect ratio that's wider than it is taller or taller than it is wider uh, so I'm just going to use a very, very clean white theme here, and I'm going to delete all the default junk on this particular slide. So I just want to show you just this one capability. Now I'm going to greatly exaggerate the size of this radio button, uh, just so that it's easy and I don't have to zoom in and zoom out as much, but we just use, we're going to use a standard shape here. It's just the oval shape. Uh, ovals are great. Um, if you hold down the shift key as you draw it, uh, it will make sure that it's a perfect circle each time. And again, like I said, with responsive design, you just want to be careful with your, um, uh, you know, your sizing to make sure that it's appropriate for all the different breakpoints. In this case here, it's, uh, it's going to be a very simple design. I'm not going to make it too complex here. When you, uh, when you use a smart shape in Adobe Captivate 8 as a button, it's going to automatically create uh, two additional states for you. So to say that Adobe Captivate 8 doesn't have multi-state objects isn't entirely accurate. There are uh, additional states for certain objects like shapes used as buttons or regular buttons. Now I'm not really going to use these, uh, these states because the state that I want to create is a selected state and not a rollover effect or a down state. So I'm just going to dis or uncheck. Uh, I was going to say disenable. I don't know if that's the right word. I'm just going to uncheck the enable for those two other states. And we're going to just go with something very simple here. First of all, I'm going to use a solid color and we're going to make it white and we're going to make it 100% opacity and uh, or opaque and but what we're going to do is uh, for the sake of the extra large radio button I'm going to make a really fat uh, stroke around the outside to give you let's even go larger than that let's go like 40. So now normally you wouldn't make it 40 uh, but you know obviously on a smaller radio button it would be like maybe 5 or 10. So there we have our our basic um, unchecked radio button and it's used as a button. There's a couple things I can do while I've got it here. 
I'm going to uncheck the hand cursor because, uh, or sorry, check off the hand cursor and disable the click sound, just personal preferences for myself. Um, the very first thing uh, we're going to do is duplicate it because uh, to achieve the, the same effect as a multi-state object, you actually are going to use a series of advanced actions to either show one version of the button and hide another or vice versa. So I'm going to duplicate this right now. We're going to start off with basically the same button duplicated here. We'll just put them side by side. This one on the right will be my, my checked version. So all I need to do to make it a checked version is fill in the middle here, and that's easily done with just selecting a dark color like that. Now, the next thing I want to do, and anytime you're working with advanced actions, I strongly encourage you to uh, be very thoughtful about the names of your objects. Uh, in this case here, we've got Smart Shape 1 and Smart Shape 2. And by the time you add a thousand other smart shapes into your project, you will forget that this is smart shape one or two, or God forbid, it could be smart shape 346 and smart shape 422. Uh, you're going to want to give these names that are easy to remember. When I'm making my own multiple choice questions, I tend to uh, give them names that give me as a, a clue as to where they belong within the course. So this is going to be um, I'm going to call this unchecked, uncheck Q1, because it's question one, A1, right? And if I hit enter, it puts an underscore between each of those. And we're going to do very much the same thing here. We're going to call this one check Q1, A1. And I know which one goes with which now, because they have very similar names to one another. Um, so our objects are named properly. The other thing we want to do, uh, this is going to be the default state, uh, this button here. And this one here will become the checked state when we run our advanced action. But the default for this checked state is that we want to make sure that it's not visible in output. And that's why you just click on this little eyeball in the, in the upper left corner of your properties panel, and that will make it not visible in output. That's what the line through the eyeball does. Now, keep them side by side, but eventually we're going to overlap these uh, so that they appear as if they are one button. But for right now and for testing purposes, side by side actually will work quite nicely. Now, we're going to need to create a variable, and probably the easiest way to do that is directly from the advanced action window. So our action for both of these buttons will be the same because it's going to be a toggle. And we're going to say on success, execute advanced action. And we don't have any scripts yet, but we're just going to click on the advanced action icon. And that'll bring up our advanced action window. I'm just going to move this a bit to the right here so that we can still see our objects in question. Now, anytime you're making a decision to, uh, to choose one set of actions to run or another set of actions to run, you're going to want to go with a conditional action. So let's change this to a conditional action. And the first thing before we get into creating our variable to keep track of all this is we need to give it an action name. So what we're going to do is we're going to just call this and I like giving things names that make sense, that describe what it is that we're going to do here. So we're going to toggle question one, and let's put the appropriate underscores in because it doesn't do it automatically for you. Answer one. So that's what we're doing. We're toggling the radio button associated with question one, answer one. Presumably there would be answer two below it, answer three, and answer four. Uh, but for today, we'll just have one choice. And I'll allow you to figure out how you can apply this uh, show hide advanced action to your own e-learning projects. Now, we're going to say if, well, we need that variable, right? So let's create that variable. And if you click on the variable button in the bottom right-hand corner here, it brings up the variables window. Click on add new. And we're going to call this 
Um, we'll just call it uh, variable, V-A-R. I like to start all my variable names with something uh, unique to variables. So in this case, V-A-R underscore, and we'll, say, we'll stick with the same convention here, Q1, A1. And that's our initial value will be zero, right? You could put a description if you want, but it isn't necessary. I'll hit save. And I'll close this here. And what we're going to ask the Adobe Captivate project is, uh, you know, basically, what's the current condition of this variable? So if the variable, and we'll just type in VAR to get us started there, Q1A1 is equal to the literal value of zero, do these actions here. Right, and so the first set of actions will be we're going to want to hide the first button and show the checked off button. So let's do that. There's a command for or an action called hide and uncheck Q1A1. We're going to show that's the other command that we're using here check Q1A1. So we're hiding one, showing the other. But we also want to change the value of this to update the current condition that we're seeing on our screen. So we're going to assign that variable a new value. In this case here, the literal value of 1. And that's all we need to do. Now, of course, there would be additional actions here if you wanted to um, you know, change the, uh, the state of another button or if there's, uh, let's say, a scoring variable that you need to update as well. But basically just to change this from a checked or unchecked state, that's what we're going to do here. Now, obviously, we want to we want to duplicate this. So I'm going to select all of these by holding down my shift key and selecting the first and the last. And then I'm going to use the copy icon uh, within the advanced action toolbar. Alternatively, you could just hit control C and we'll go to the else tab and even though the, what we're going to put in the else is the opposite set of actions it's helpful to start off with this set of actions because you just need to change a couple of small things so I'll paste these in in this case here we're going to instead of hiding the unchecked status we're going to show it or actually in this case, we're going to hide the checked state, this one here, show the original unchecked version, and then update this with a value of zero back to its original value. So essentially, we've created a toggle for this radio button. Let me save this action. And we'll hit close. And that's the basics of a show hide advanced action. You might hear other Captivate developers talk about show hide scenarios or show hide uh, advanced actions. That's the basics there. Now you can take that of course and build a much more robust interaction that includes many buttons or or even check boxes uh, or in this case radio buttons would also turn off other buttons as you select them. Let's test it out. We'll test it out with them side by side. So you can see exactly what's happening here. We'll do this in a browser. So there's our unchecked uh, radio button. If I click it, it will disappear. It will show the checked version. And obviously in the background, it's updating that a variable for us. And that's it. It's pretty straightforward. Now let's make it look nice. And you can use the alignment toolbar. You can get to the alignment toolbar from the Windows drop down menu and selecting the alignment toolbar. And let's just uh, align and resize to the same size there. So that will overlap them both. And let's do a preview of this project uh, in browser again. And now this will give you the results that you were trying to achieve with a multi-state object, even though Captivate 8 doesn't really allow for that. So you can see this gives you the clickable radio button effect that you're looking for. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel 
And if you thought this video was helpful or useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.